Hello and welcome to Really Wellness. I am here with the awesome Mila Dibiagi, who is the founder of Move With Mila, which is a revolutionary and absolutely uplifting dance program that I really, really love. Um, and we're here to talk a little bit about dance and well-being and, and Mila's well-being journey as well. Um, so Mila, I don't know if you want to start with giving like a little bit of an intro to Move With Mila and how you differ from other dance classes. Firstly, I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me and asking me to be a part of your beautiful, your beautiful platform. Move With Mila is, it's a, a space that I created. Um, it's, a, it's, it's more than dance. It's not like, I was talking about it today, you know, when people hear the word dance, it's like, <gasps> dance, you know, it's much more than that. <laughs> I freak out when I hear dance, you know. I think it's just because there's, there's this conception or, or this, um, this thing about that when we hear dance, it's, we immediately go into that, I need to look a certain way. Um, the needs and the shoulds and the musts, all of those words start to come out, you know. Um, and what that does is it, it prohibits one um, and it definitely prohibited me to um, really explore and to actually do something that I really enjoyed doing, connecting with people. Um, it put a lot of rules and a lot of, um, it jolted me. It really did. And um, I'll go, I'll go back to that. So, so as I said, it, it's more than dance. It's, it's about embracing love. It's about embracing you and all that is you. And, um, so I, I, I lost me a while ago. Um, and I always moved. I moved since I was like, my parents laughed at me because they, 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 and they say, I mean, you can, you can ask them, they go in, when Mila was younger, she didn't crawl. She first moved, like she was moving around the house and I would go to the, um, the, in those days, you know, like uh, you would have to go to the record and like press it. And it wasn't like what we have now, you know, with our computers and everything so easy with the music. And I would just want to play the music and I wanted to just bounce and move. And it just brought me so much joy. It wasn't about, it wasn't about anything, but just joy and expression. It was connect. I could connect with my friends in a way that, that wasn't speaking it was um, creating with them. So coming together and it was like social and um, it was a way to, to ex like I, I, to find my body language. How do I express in a way that, that maybe I've never explored before um, that isn't with speech. And I, and I love that. I felt really safe, very, very safe. And um, so that's, that's what's, move with Mila is it's a space for one to to come and reconnect with why do you love to move why do we love going out and when we hear music we feel that freedom to move and we just move and do it why can't we do it all the time um there doesn't need to be a should there doesn't need to be a must we don't we don't need to be anything other than ourselves um it's not a place where i want anybody to move like me please don't move like me it's not about that. I, or, um, you know, I want everybody to move like their bodies. Um, because when we're in a room together and I've done this in a studio where we all drive and move, but I'll teach you like a routine, but yet we all move the same, but yet so differently. And it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And, um, so it's, it's, it's a space to, to, to embrace the mover within you because I really do believe that all of us are movers inside. We are. It's just being allowed the space to, to explore that and um, a space that, that you can connect with people and laugh because it's really not that serious. A space where even if you come in and you need to cry, let it out. You know, that's your space. Let your hair down, let it go. Um, it's your space, it's our space. And, um, yeah, I, I, from my own journey, I, I, I had to disassociate myself from the dancing, but what I found 
is that there's no way that I can ever leave the mover inside me. It's impossible. No person, no one can tell me that I can't move because it is it's in me. And it's a, it's, it's, it's joy. It's, it's joy. So we explore all sorts of movements. Um, I'll take you through routine. So we do like a, a dance, a dance that you'll learn throughout the month. And at the end of the month, you have a DJ who comes in live and will do the dance off. And then um, I also have a class that is becoming aware of the body. How does your body work? It's also some fitness mixed with, um, mixed with dance, but mainly focusing on the alignment, body awareness, Um, and so you feel safe and empowered in your body. So, you know, how does this body actually work? You know, um, and then I do a a mindfulness at the end of every class, um, which is super important because our lives can be so busy sometimes just to come back into the stillness and to go back into this, which is going, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, acknowledge and just celebrate what a, what is in me, what is around me, and what is in this present moment. What I have fallen in love with about your classes is that it's not dance in the traditional sense. Even the like high intensity class, which I took on Monday, it's so yeah. mindful and it's so joyful. And it's about moving and an experience in in expression without words in a way that's so so kind of healing and uplifting and I think you're right that a lot of the time you know I've always been very afraid of taking dance classes because I will tell you my rhythm I mean I have a I have a very good friend of mine is a dancer and she laughs at me I'm absolutely terrible from a technical perspective but moving and enjoying that movement brings me kind of such positivity um, and, and happiness. And, and in your class, it felt like a safe space to do that without the judgment, without the need for things to be perfect, but just to really let go and, and enjoy and be with the community. Um, and I think that's what's so special and so unusual in the best yes. way about what you're doing. Um, but I know that you do come from like a little bit of a more technical dance background and and i wanted to kind of explore a little bit about that so what inspired you to to go down that path um and how you kind of through it what your well-being journey was there so you know that saying there's a saying life on life's terms (laughs) (laughs) so um you know what i i knew when i was younger that i i wanted to to do performing arts and I went to study the performing arts and I went and I, and I pursued my career in that. And whilst I was doing it, it came with a lot of, a lot of beauty, but then there also came some, some really intense, intense stuff. And it's, it's quite, um, quite difficult for, for me to talk about it. And, but it is important and I, and I know that, um, whew, you know, like when I, and I think this, this will kind of tie the knot of why I do move with me now. Um, it's, I started losing sight as to why I started doing what I was doing. Um, at a very young age, I was exposed to, I needed to look a certain way because it meant success or it meant love or it meant, um, you know, or even working with the body in a certain way. If you express pain, it means weakness. When, when I first started and I walked into the studio, um, that, uh, I always, you know, cherish it brings such good memories. I was never, I was never, it was never about needing to look or, you know, be anything other um and i felt really free and um when the rules came in you know when all those rules came in it jolted me a lot hey like it it really did and um 
I stopped listening to my to my to my gut, and um, I I then um, I pursued my career and, and I went to to Israel, went to the Kibbutz Contemporary Dance Company, and it was very interesting there because when I was there, they they um, expressed that we had gone into the subject of perfectionism and you spoke about that just now. And, you know, I, I asked them, you know, I was like, how do I come out of this? Because I'm scared. I'm scared to travel outside the line because what if it's not perfect? And they took me and they worked with me in a way that was so gentle um, and gave me the space to explore, to fall, to create, to cry, to to do whatever it was that I needed to do. And and I realized then there is no such thing as perfectionism. There is no such thing as 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 being perfect. If anything, it's 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 an it's an expectation that is it's so difficult to live you know, to, to achieve. It's almost, it's unachievable because the, the pole gets higher and higher, right? It doesn't, it doesn't stop. It just gets higher. And, um, so the universe brought in this beautiful gift and from there, then I went and I, I traveled and I started doing musical theater and I was really happy and I loved doing it because I was singing and I was dancing and I was acting but through, through that, I really battled to let go of the certain way of looking um, because I, I really, I, I thought, you know, if I look this way, this is what success is. Or if I have to, you know, express that I'm sore, then what? And what happened was I experienced my first injury um, where I, I lost sight in my eye like because I damaged the crystal in my in, um, inner ear and then I got a um, herniated disc L4, L5. And, you know, it was so, for me, that was the universe talking to me. And I've always been a spiritual little, <laughs> little child. Um, I love nature so for me nature and earth and um you know that for me that's how i connect and i um you know that's that's always been my my safe spaces so that was like the universe kind of speaking to me and going okay it's time to to just listen what's going on and i went into um, rehabilitation for to help with my eyes. So I lost coordination. I couldn't, um, you know, I couldn't coordinate properly. Um, and I was sleeping all the time because I had a terrible concussion. And um, I, I did like a nine month rehabilitation process. And in that, I was working with holistic healers. One, Jonathan Joshua, that I um, had an interview with, it's on my Instagram. Um, and he works with the mind, body, and soul. And I had another um, therapist, Wayne Derman, who works specifically with athletes. And um, I had these incredible angels with me, guiding me. And in that was my first time that I was exposed to mind, body, soul. For me, it was, okay, this is my time to repaint my canvas, to go, what is it maybe that I didn't see before or wasn't, you know, ready to see before that maybe I can see now. And I took the five months. I didn't want to have surgery, nine months, sorry. And I, and I used that time and I loved it because that was my first time that I came back to Mills. It was the first time that I could just take time out and just listen and find the stillness. And it wasn't about this outside. Um, daunting because 
there was the fears. If I don't do a show, then what? If I'm not this identity, this identity that I'm supposed to be, then what? Will I be loved? Will I be accepted? All those fears popping up. And I, I recovered from that injury and I went to go and perform on cats again. And in that time, I already then it started, I, I loved coaching. And um, through that, from my nine months, I was learning the body more, studying the body, understanding how the body works, starting to cultivate, seeing what worked with my body, what doesn't work. Let me play with this. Let me play with that. You know, working with the spiritual side as well as the physical side and really like just um, starting to experience and explore. Um, and it was incredible, the process. And I went to do cats and already then I knew something inside had shifted and I loved, I loved performing in it. I hadn't performed like that in a long time, but something still inside of me wasn't ready yet to hear. So I was still attached to a certain way of looking and, um, and I, and, and, my body went through another injury where I lost feeling in my legs. And the company was incredible. They held me and they just, they knew. Because in that, in that contract, I was, it was different. I was, you know, I was much more mindful with the way that I approach things, but yet, I wasn't, there was something, a piece of the puzzle that I just wasn't, I wasn't seeing. And um, so then I, I lost feeling in my legs and it was very scary. Um, I came back to Cape Town and I started the healing journey process. And um, I was, you know, was being told that I may never dance again, ever. Um, and it was very difficult to, to, to hear. And all those fears that I had, I felt that it was, it was like coming, it was all coming out now. And, um, and it did happen, you know, like I, I would walk and then if it wasn't a show coming, it was oh, okay, I'm not really interested in, in hearing. But you know what? It was the best gift ever because it's brought me here. And as cheesy as that sound, it has. And I've needed to go through what I've gone through because like now, so I took myself, um, I gave myself the time to walk a path of discovering how do I nurture my body? How do I feed my body properly? How do I, how, how I want to look in the mirror, in the mirror and love what I see. I don't want to see myself through somebody else's eyes. I want to see myself through my eyes and I'm ready to walk this journey, not someone else's journey and understand that actually that person, that person has their own journey. Like I have my own journey and I started walking that two and a half years ago and it was opening the trap door. It was opening this door that I kept shut for so long and exposing the things that I never wanted to talk about or I felt ashamed about. And like I often say, you know, it's looking through your own eyes or loving yourself, giving yourself the permission to, to be or to just stand there or to, to, um, to stop and then enter the space again, I had, I had to give myself that permission. That was it. You know, that was the change. That was the shift. And it's, a, it's an ongoing process of understanding how do I climb into my skin as opposed to wanting to climb out of my skin. And it's about that love. It's about this deep love inside that, that's the, that I want to nurture always. Because when I can nurture that, then I can nurture others. So yeah, it, it's, it's understanding that my body is not an object. 
my body is not, um, I don't need to change the way that I look um, to be loved or to be approved or to be worthy. And also sometimes if I'm finding it hard to, and I'm having that time where it's coming in and I'm feeling that because when you are exposed to that at a very young age, it takes a long time for neural pathways and things and different, you know, patterns to shift and change. And it's um, not about wanting to push that process and that journey to go fast because inside there, that's where I find the growth. So until I'm ready to let something go, it will keep happening until I'm going, okay, I'm ready to let it go. And I guess the same thing applies with movement, you know, like it will be frustrating because it's going to be like, I don't understand. This arm doesn't want to go there. My body doesn't want to go there. And you're going to get frustrated and things are going to come up. You know, it's going to come out. It, it has to, it has to all come up. But the beauty is when we let it out and we go, you know what? Let's get out of the head and back into the heart. And there are so many things that you've said there that strongly, strongly resonate with me. And your story I mean, is beyond inspirational. I was getting like emotional, like teary eyed while you were telling me. Um, and I think in part, because there were things that you were saying that I connect to on a really personal level. Um, I think what you've just described, which I want to focus on first, which is just kind of letting things go, is really important. Um, and I think it links back to what you were talking about in relation to kind of pain and going through pain and how sometimes the universe sends things your way, very painful things that you have to go through in order to develop a different mentality and learn to love yourself. I think in life, we're really, really afraid of, of trauma and experiencing either physical pain or emotional pain, but it's, it's inevitable on whatever level that we will. And I think mm. if you can learn to accept that you will experience pain, but that it is a, a learning journey, like a teaching journey forward, it brings you to this place, which is what we're talking about now, where you're like, fuck it, <laughs> for want of a better word. <laughs> fuck it. Like, I want to let it out. I want to let it go. And it's almost like, like rising from the ashes. You have this freedom that you never had before because you were so constrained by that fear of pain, right? You've been talking about um, yeah. kind of like other people's perceptions and how that made you like see yourself. That, that's a, a prime example of, of a type of fear of pain that a lot of women in particular, and I know I have been, go through where they're so afraid of not receiving love and being let down if they don't present yeah. a perfect kind of perspective that they kind of clam up and, and mm. lose pieces of themselves on that journey. But once you can experience that pain, any pain in life, push through it and come out the other side, you're left being able to breathe and i really get the sense that, that that's kind of what you're you're describing here um, yes. and i think what i i find so interesting about dance and, and and movement um and why i'm attracted to things like for example movement meditation is because it gives you a space without the kind of complexities of words and and all of those structures to just physically express and let go um and i think that's what's so beautiful about it and that's where it can play a real part in in kind of getting through trauma you know finding a place of well-being i think that's really really important um and i wanted to ask whether kind of your journey has, has been part of the reason that you've been motivated to, to teach dance um or kind of what the other reasons are behind that definitely yeah um definitely i love i love i love people so i love working with people i love um connecting and um i love seeing oh, i love to see um for example like when you figure out how and when how when, when that comes in and you just find that spot and I can be on that journey with you, it, it, I can't explain how much that fills my heart. Um, you know, it's, 
being on stage and doing this for me, you can't, you can't actually, it's, it's the same. You know, I, I love both. I'm extremely passionate about both. They're so different. I love working with performers. I love working with non-performers. I love working with anybody, you know, um, my favorite is also, you know, when I have clients that will go, um, I'll see them in a class, say for example, like when I'm teaching a class and I'll see them in a class and I see my client going a little bit slower because she's, she's going, hang on a second. My body needs this right now. I love that. Um, I love teaching. I think it's also because, you know, it's, it's important that I guess there's spaces that I never got as a young child that I wish I had. Um, and I just also can't let things sit inside of me anymore. I, it has to come out. It needs to be shared. So, um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a huge, huge passion of mine. So if I train one-on-ones to doing group sessions, if we do meditations, you know, it, it's, I love, I love exploring the body. I love exploring the mind. I love putting it together. Okay. Yeah. And just a journey with somebody. It's very precious. And, and I wanted to ask you in, in terms of, of that journey, uh, both kind of with yourself um, mm. and with other people, um, do you see a real mental and, and physical impact in a positive sense over time? Yes. So I monitor, um, I, I, I work with a very holistic way of working. I've got a team on board with me that is all holistic. So whatever you're needing, and when you come to me, it's a full on mind, body, soul approach. The reason why is because I have found that to, to really work with me. Um, and I, be, I believe in it strongly because it's worked. Um, and I've seen the body heals. If you give the body time, it heals. Um, it's an amazing, beautiful, beautiful um, temple that we have. And I, you know, watching somebody become, um, reach their goals, um, being able to um, listen to, to that gut a little bit more. You know, I'm there to support you. But like I say in my classes, it's the same thing with the move. I'll give you the base of the choreography. But then if you feel like you need to add a pop head there, please go ahead. You know, I, I, I'm not going to tell you all the time how and how, why. No, I want my journey with you is also to let you discover that. It's a huge thing. Um, to find that, to be able to listen inside because we have the answers inside. And with movement, you know, there, there is a way and there's a technique um, and with people suffering with injuries, how can I help you along that journey? Because you don't have to stop. It's just understanding, okay, what am I needing in this moment? And then how can I work with this so that the body can heal? And then eventually, you know, then you then. Then you work up to, to moving a little bit more. You know, the, I believe also a lot in variety. So exposing yourself to a lot is key. Why not? You know? Um, <laughs> so I, I work on a very holistic, intuitive um, way. We're all different. We're not the same. Let's not try to be the same. It's not fun. No, and and I think that's so right, and and I think it's also you know beautiful the way that you speak about teaching because I think really what you what you get at and at least what I've experienced in your classes it's about focusing on the joy of what your body can do and having compassion mm -hmm. and and love for that not what it can't do and I think so often going back to that point that that we were speaking on around perfectionism. We're so con concerned with what we can't do and what we should be doing that we mm. get to focus on what we are able to do and like the wonderful places that our, our body can take us uh, in so many different aspects. Sometimes we don't understand how to access that. So we need that person to help us access that. 
you know, and like I said today in the class, we were doing something and, and I, and I completely went blank. It was hysterical, but you know, what? and I said in the classes, I'm not like, guys, I'm not perfect. I don't want to be perfect. If you see that, that's not, that's not what this is going to be. You know, like I want to have fun. I want to explore. And you know, it is that it's like, if you're needing that person, I needed that person. Yeah. I needed somebody to, to help me find that. Yeah. And I'm like, I've had many angels. I still have my angels. I always, I call them angels. I always have them. That's so beautiful because I think often the, the people around us are the, the people that kind of help us through things in life the most. And something for me, at least on like my own well being journey, it has specifically been like the people around me and being able to give back what I was given. Um, but I also think it's really interesting and I think really gorgeous that you, you know, what you keep saying is, I'm trying to give back what I didn't have. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people forget how to do, you know, often we become so wrapped up in, like, I didn't have this, so therefore it doesn't exist. Mm. Rather than seeing, if I didn't have this and I wanted it and it's such a beautiful thing for other people, why can't I create it? Um, and I think that's what's yeah. so, so gorgeous about what you're doing. You've created this real safe space for people to come and explore and express. Um, but what's also great about it is, is that it's like a party, right? You know, you spoke <laughs> earlier about that kind of joy of movement you experienced as a kid, right? And the social element of dancing. It's all about like, interacting with your body and interacting with other people's bodies and expressing in such a fun way and so often when you go to a dance class you don't get that it's very much you know dogmatic you must do things this way this is the only way you're going to get the benefit from the exercise from the dance whereas working with you the experience is we're going to have fun and we're going to enjoy and we're going to express and i think that's so special and it really gets down to the essence of of dance itself and, and why movement is so beneficial to us of course your body of course the body's going to get the benefits of course your body is going to of course all of those things are going to happen because we're doing fitness we're doing we're moving we are doing things we are we are accessing when you're moving you're accessing so many parts of the body at the same time that's why i i do incorporate that dance sculpt because before we can move and twist and turn and that, 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 you know, how does the body work in a, in a straight line? You know, I first need to understand that before I start doing all these, you know, really, because my classes are energetic. I mean, I've got mad energy and then I've got, you know, the calm energy. Um, so it's, it's, it's learning. It's, it's really what, what, what I describe it as is really building the, um, the armor, building your body. So she is strong and she's, she's, she's equipped. It's ready. You feel, you feel empowered. What's really special is that, that it, it's about becoming embodied, which I think often we forget yes. how to do. You know, I think even in, you know, you were describing how in a profession where you used your body all the time, you forgot what it was to love your body, right? Have compassion for it. Um, people forget what it is to be in their bodies and what that feels like in a positive way mm. rather than an uncomfortable way or a negative way. Um, and I think you know, that's what's so special about this space and, and about dance, you embrace it in this way, is that you learn how to feel your body and what it wants. It's similar to almost to yoga, right? Like the principles yes. of yoga are very much about like moving within yourself, like the breath mm. and focusing on that and focusing on the feeling of being in your body. Um, and I think you managed to achieve that in a way that's really, really unusual in a dance class, which is really, really It's cool. funny. I mean, you, you speak about breath and my, I mean, you could ask my, my friends when, when I perform, I breathe so loudly. And I talk about it because it brings you, it sends oxygen to your muscles. It centers yourself. It brings, it's like, med it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, I bring in a form of meditation. Yeah just to come just to stay centered so you know i i am someone who's who's very much kind of come from an eating disorder background but interestingly despite mm. uh having experienced a variety of eating disorders over many many years one thing i never got into 
was over exercising, right? So I never touched exercise. I just stopped eating, basically. Um, but mm -hmm. over the past kind of, I would say five years, exercise is something that I've, I've really fallen in love with. And I, I've become very like interested in, in all different forms from yoga to dance. To, I do a lot of weight training as well. Um, I really enjoy running all of these things. And one of the things that doing exercise has taught me is how to breathe. And then through that, how to feel within my body, you know, I, I never, you know, previously in, in I would take an, an occasional exercise class and, and the trainer or the teacher would always say to me, breathe, just breathe. Why aren't you breathing? And I'd love, <laughs> yeah, I'd love for people in the gym, you know, I'd go with my mom, she's going to kill me for saying this, but she almost sounds like, you know, when you see those men lifting real weights in the gym, my mom makes the same noises. She breathes like that when she exercises and I never understood it. But as I started to get more into exercise as part of my healing process, I realized how much uh, benefit you get from that breathing, from that feeling into your body with the breath. I think it's so, so important. I want, I want you to know, you know, as, um, you know, I've been on, on a recovery journey for, for an eating disorder. Um, yeah. And, you know, anything can be a trigger. Yeah. Any environment anything yeah. but it also doesn't have to be um, everything is a journey yeah we learn we grow um we we learn how to you know it's more when you shut something away why am i shutting that away as i said you know i was i, I wasn't allowed to move i wasn't even supposed to be moving now yeah. like my body wasn't supposed to be dancing and I'm dancing again you know everything is possible um, my friends and family are sick of this phrase but like my favorite favorite sort of mantra that I've developed over time and it's through watching the journeys of the people around me people who I was in treatment with my eating disorder my own journey meeting people who have been through things that I could never imagine experiencing in life and come out the other end happy and positive and full of it um you know nothing in life is insurmountable absolutely nothing it doesn't matter what life throws your way you can it's, it's how you think about it and how you deal with it in that moment and over time over that journey that defines how it defines you it's that whole yeah. thing of, that, of having those people yeah that you need to help you through that absolutely and and i think community is really key to any journey and mm. um you know whether it, it is a recovery journey uh whether you're just exploring something new within yourself or trying to discover new things on whatever level like community makes you feel supported right and safe and you feel mm. like you have a space within the people who you build around you who love you in order to express and in order to be yourself and in order to explore whatever it is that you want to. Um, mm. And those people, whoever they are, like you said, you know, they really are your angels. If your community is, is your kind of guardian angel, if you will, or your collection of guardian angels. And it will constantly be growing. It will constantly be developing, you know, and there's no one way for one person. There's, you know, whatever works for you and whatever is, bringing you that, um, that, you know, inner smile, go towards that. Absolutely. And sometimes you know, I spoke about this before, you know, feeling uncomfortable. Sometimes we've got to check in and go, is this uncomfortable feeling? Is it a bad, it might not be a bad uncomfortability. Maybe it's growth uncomfortability. And I think growth is by nature uncomfortable. Like mm -hmm. I think, yeah wherever you're growing from whatever you're trying in order to grow um or even if growth is inevitable and it's just within the moment um it's a change right and we're human human beings don't like change just like the other animals don't like change um and growth can be scary and very uncomfortable but ultimately it's remembering that there's always positivity on the other side it's like buddhism right everything in life goes in a circle you come up you come down you come up you come down but always it goes back around to that positive space and it's just remembering that I think and the and, and I wanted to share this you know and um, be like is that there is going we are like to ride that wave ride it 
ride the wave ride it absolutely uh, yeah and I think it's interesting that you, you make the kind of comparison with water because I think if you think about water, right? If you're out in the ocean and you get pulled out by a current, if you fight that wave, you're going to drown. But if you let mm. that wave bring you back to shore, then you're going to survive. And, and that's exactly what it is. It's riding the wave. And it's that same, you know, I, um, I said... I talk about that in movement, like I'll say, um, like even something so simple as a shoulder, you know, um, in your body, you can feel like there's a, something really stiff and stuck, um, whether it's, it's something mental that is manifesting within the body or, you know, something that's, that we finding extremely tense. Is the body talking to us in some way? What is my body needing in this point? How can I find like water, there's rocks, there's all sorts of things within the sea, but it can and the you know the the weather changes and all sorts of things changes, but yet the the ocean is there and it keeps going and it keeps flowing. So how with your current, how can you find that flow? Yeah. How can you release that stuckness? Um, how can you find, you know release that that blockage? Um, and with movement, it's you know like. When, when we're doing um, some of the moves, it's, it's like also to find, ah, how do I get out of that, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, we could be discussing this for so long. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you made an interesting point, which is kind of why I've gravitated towards dance more recently, is that it's a, it's a physical way to work through whatever whatever it is that you may not even have been aware was going on that your body is holding that's actually from up here um and i think you know that's that's what's so beautiful whatever level that you're on with dance about it that's you know exactly kind of what it's there to help you explore um and i wanted to ask you um for for people who are kind of more my level even like the level below that who are kind of just starting out on this journey where would you recommend that they start and and look for for inspiration and, and also classes obviously your own i highly recommend it but beyond that as well what inspires you and what would you recommend to other people so i definitely recommend um if you're going to join move with mila definitely start with a back to basics class so you'll start with that one. Um, every class is designed to help you to move into the next one. So we have routines that we build, that I've built, and we build through every month. And then um, I prep you for that. So I take you through that. Um, and we explore different languages. So I would say um, definitely start with the back to basics. Next month, I do have some really cool additions coming in. Um, I can't talk about it yet, but it is coming. So that's going to be happening from next month. Um, it's all very much about um, going slowly and um, just finding the primal movements. I also do highly recommend, you know, doing your fitness. And I do that with you as well. So as I said, variety is key. Um, I really do believe in variety, doing all sorts of things and exposing your body to a lot. And I did that a lot when, when I was training, you know, um, as a performer and I found huge benefits in my performing when I trained my body in different ways. So it's, it's, um, yeah, keep yourself variety, explore Pilates, explore yoga, explore gyrotonics, go check that out. It's amazing. You know, um, fitness, try all sorts of things. What, what are you wanting in this time? When it comes to movement, what I can say is and give yourself the permission and the time to, to explore that space. And, and I think without exploring different things for your body, you won't understand what your body wants and what works for you to express mm. in the way that you would like to. I think that's a really beautiful piece of advice. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much for joining me today. It's been excited to see you on Monday. Absolutely. I can't wait.